Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this film I'd like to show you how to do the exploded view. The exploded view allows you to take your model apart and uh, different components and uh, kind of spread them out from the model and then put in exploded line sketches that show the path that that part takes in order to get it back into the assembly. This is very demonstrable and it's something you're probably going to want to do when you get to the drawing portion of our class, which is going to be next week. We're going to be taking your exploded line sketch or your exploded view and your exploded line sketches and import that into a drawing with a bill of materials. Very similar to what you've seen when you go through uh, engineering documents or even uh, uh, appliance uh, you know, manuals. Uh, you see exploded views of how uh, the, the appliance is put together uh, with the expectation that uh, eventually you're going to either have to assemble something like this or be able to get spare parts for it so you can put the, the model back or the, you know, the appliance or you know, machine back together again. So this is how you do it and uh, it's really kind of a fun function here in SOLIDWORKS. So what you want, you want to be on the, the, the assembly tab on the command manager and you want to go to exploded view. And very simply it just opens up a, a dialog box up here from the very top of the bottom when, it, uh, when you select on a part over here it's going to give you a triad and what you do is you move your parts around by way of that triad. Uh, and it will list all the steps in here. Uh, you can't really rename these steps, it would be nice if you could but it just has uh, you know one step one and step two and so on and so forth. What it's looking for down here is a selection and uh, a direction and eventually a distance that you're going to uh, move these parts around. So let's do this. Let's take our um, let's take our uh, yeah let's take the wheel first. We'll take our wheel first. Select on the wheel. We're going to pull in this blue uh, portion of the, uh, the triad and we'll pull it out in this direction and uh, you know kind of odd the way this works, but you pull it out here with the expectation of going over here to the properties manager and making uh, you know, changes over here, and you can't, it's already closed. But what you have over here is this explode step one. If you double click on that, if you want to get a very specific uh, distance in here instead of 12.33 and some change after that, we we'll just make that plain old 12, you can do that. Then go to apply and then done, it allows you to go back into that step. So now we have our wheel off. Let's go to our uh, control, our push rod. Let's go ahead and click on that. Go to the uh, go to the triad. And this one's going to be the red one. Let's go ahead and drag that out. And you can see that there's a scale bar over here on the right hand side. You might be able to use that as a guide. If you click on eight, it looks like it's going to stick with eight. Well, eight and change over here. But if you want to make that specific, again, double click on that. Now that's the first one. If you open that up, it shows you uh, the different components in there. It actually just shows you that part. But if you double click on that, it gives you all these settings back again. So, what it's saying here is that, uh, you know, what I call, uh, you know, 130126-wheel-1 uh, at, in the SARS mechanism here, which is the name of my assembly file, is taking that part in here and uh, showing you the direction, which is going to be in the z-axis uh, by way of that assembly part, and the distance on that, uh, you can change that. So that's not the one I wanted to change, but I do want to change this one. So let's double click on that guy, and let's just make that an even eight, eight inches. Okay, let's do some more. Click on this. Oh, done. Let's click on this, move that up. You don't necessarily have to put in uh, whole numbers in here if you don't want to. If something that's uh, relatively close works for you, that's fine. I like having things uh, very specific. I don't like having uh, you know, things going out to 10 or 12 uh, significant digits. So we'll move that up, then we'll move our screws. Now we're going to make two selections here. So we know that we're not going to do this one by one, we're going to do two at the same time. So we're going to make two selections here, and then we're going to move that up. So with the green triad, we probably want to put that a little bit higher than, um, than our wheel mount. So let's go to explode step four, and let's make that nine inches. And then done. Let's go to the bottom, let's pull some of these out. So we'll pull our nuts out first. Pull that down, maybe make that four inches, go to explode step five, double click on that, type in four, green check mark, don't want to do that green check mark, but uh, that'll work and then done. Let's uh, click on our washers, so both washers, triad, let's pull that down, let's go over here to our explode step six, make that a specific maybe three inches, apply and done. And that looks like it works. So a couple more items. Let's go ahead and take this pin out. So 
sometimes a little hard to, uh, hard to pick. I'll explode step 7, double click on that, and let's make that 9. And then done. And that should be enough for now. Well, uh, we could pull out some other elements, but I think that kind of explains it a little bit better. As you rotate it around, you can kind of get a pretty good idea of where those elements are going to go over here to put this assembly back together. But SolidWorks does give you an extra a uh, little bit of help there in, in regard to doing that and as you explode line sketch. Before we do that, let's go to our configuration manager and take a look at that. So now in our default configuration we have now an exploded view. If you want to go back into that dialog box we just did, we can go back and add a feature and it gives us all those elements again. If we want to add additional elements in there we can do that. Uh, beyond that we have the different explode steps. So again you can right click in here and go to the end of that edit feature and go into those steps. So it kind of goes in a hierarchy just as a, yeah, as we would expect in, in SolidWorks. Let's do this. Let's do our explode line sketch. That would be next. Again that's on our assembly tab in our command manager. Almost all the way over to the right. Uh, what it's looking for over here is items to connect. So let's do the last item we did first. Let's do our pin. And what you want to do is you want to click on uh, an element. If you click on a, a circular face like that, what it's going to do is going to put an arrow right in the middle of that, and it's going to draw a 3D sketch to whatever else we want to draw on this. So I want to go from that uh, concentric uh, surface to that concentric surface. And then, uh, yeah, you have some options in here. You can do reverse. You can make it go a different direction, but that's definitely a direction we want to go in. We can choose an alternative path if we want to do that. And we would define that, but uh, what we want to do here is do uh, go along the XYZ uh, coordinate system, and it's going to do a 3D sketch. So it's actually putting a sketch out there in 3D. And then green check mark for that. So we have that uh, sketch in there. Let's do a couple other ones, maybe these screws to the hole down here. And you can see it goes through the wheel mount there. So from that screw bottom, to the surface down here that defines uh, where that hole is. Green check mark. Some of these are going to be uh, going to be jogged a little bit, and this is going to be a good example of that. So if you click on this surface, and perhaps this surface in here, now you can see it jogs. So now you can see the true 3D nature of that. And then green check mark and green check mark again that takes it out of that. So now we have uh, in our configuration manager we have our you know our our assembly here our default configuration with an exploded view of, you know, exploded view, you have to have exploded view in here before you have the exploded line sketch. Here's your exploded line sketch, or 3D sketch in there, if you want to go back in there and edit that sketch. We could do that. Or if you want to go back in here to the assembly, we can enter that same way by going in exploded line sketch, and it'll continue to add sketch elements for us. So now that these are all uh, highlighted in light blue, we can uh, make uh, uh, adjustments to these. So let's say you want to have something that's other than uh, like this jog. You don't really need this jog in here. If you got rid of this jog in here and actually connected to these two lines, that would be an appropriate uh, change. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's try to select that line. Now that it's selected, it's light blue. We can take these two points and merge those together. Now it's really squished in here, so we can actually take that line here and this line with the control key to press and maybe move that out a little bit. Or we could probably take this line, select that line, and delete that, pull this line out, and maybe make these two points merge. So that comes out here like this, but now we have a different jog over here, so we can probably bend that a little bit that way. Now you notice that that's along the x-axis. This one is not defined as being such, but we can probably take this line portion, this line segment down here. We drag that out a little bit more. If we look at our triad, we probably want to make that along the z-axis. So if you click on that, we'll make that along the z. Mm, doesn't like that too much. So let's try that one more time. So it looks like it's going down a little bit. That's along the X. That one's a little bit off too, so we can probably make that one along the Z. Doesn't look like it likes that, but let's get rid of that coincident relationship there. And I think if we did the same thing down here, uh, make that along the Z. 
that gets out in place. So I think what had happened is there was a coincident relationship with something over here that it was interfering with that. Uh, the 3D sketches are a little uh, difficult to work with, but uh, play around with those things. You're not quite getting the settings you're looking for. You're not quite getting the view you're looking for. Uh, you can play around with that and actually get it something that's pretty close. So, that's pretty much what I want to show you here. What you would like to do is have something like this imported into your uh, into your drawing that you're going to be doing next uh, week. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting uh, together an assembly drawing with the bill of materials. And with the bill of materials you're going to show an exploded view with balloons on it. But uh, we'll cover that in class next week. And one last thing. Let me do one more uh, exploded line sketch. Clicking that one more time, and let's go ahead and put our wheel in place. And this too is going to be a jog. So I clicked on that surface as opposed to that face down here, but it still is considering, uh, you know, making it symmetrical and picking the, the point in the middle of that. And just like before, some of these lines can be moved. So once we get out of that dialog box, we can still make uh, modifications to it. So that looks a lot clearer. If you had that in an isometric view with a little bit of cleanup, you could probably have that looking pretty darn good. So that's everything I wanted to cover with assemblies for now. Uh, I will see you in class.